My special guest today on the red couch is none other than Mr. Anderson Cherry. You see his big trucks, you see the big trucks all over the place. You see the name in every uh, aspect of uh, waste uh, management, recycling, and so on. He's always been on the cutting edge of forward thinking. Jose y Jose. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to ask Anderson straight off to, to, to explain why there's a Spanish name um, on, the, on the thing. Jose y Jose. So, uh, straight up, Anderson, t- tell me about Jose y Jose. Well, Jose y Jose started. Um early 70s, 69, with my dad. My dad um, used to travel to a lot of Spanish speaking countries. Well, clearly. His name is Joseph Collingham. Uh-huh. And his first, his first son, which is my brother, is, um, he's Jose. So he named it after, he named it after, oh. after them. Oh. Um, Jose, Jose. Yeah. Joseph and Joseph then. <laughs> Jose y Jose, right. Jose, Joseph and Joseph. Well, and, and you know, all along I thought it was you who gave the business its, its name. So your dad was the was the original um, operator. Yeah, he was the original. Uh, he was the start of the business. Yeah, it was in uh, started in the Zex, in Pima Park, the Zex, number 20, Pima Park, the Zex. Yeah. And my, my dad is my hero, okay? Uh, my dad is my hero. I can remember um, my dad was always put, set me down to watch the 7, 7 o'clock news every day that was, no so man. you used to see me then in those days when yeah. I ran. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, you know. <laughs> so my dad, my dad um, walked this particular, this particular evening um, after the news. Uh, Steel Williams, um, Sir Charles Williams was on class, yes. doing a, a segment, and he was speaking about black businesses, and he said something that changed my life. Uh, and it was around sixteen at the time. He said around among black people here, here. In Barbados, there's no second and third generation black businesses. And at that time, at that point in time, you know, something um, was making me, you know, it was like Bobo and all. Yeah, they said, no, I, I really want to have a second and third generation business. And I would like to see a second and third in my lifetime. At 16, I had done school. I didn't do too bad in school. So I'd done at 16 years old. And I went straight up. I remember that morning, I couldn't wait till Monday morning. Um, so, you know, Friday, everybody writing the check, their clothes and stuff. And Monday morning, I couldn't be, I was anxious to meet, to get to see over in his office. And I went nearly Monday, Tuesday, the Wednesday. And, and but he, he used to be very busy, busy in the morning, you know, coordinating work and in his office and stuff. And on the Thursday, he, he came out and said, okay, come young man, come, come. He said, sir, he said, young man, I don't have any vacation jobs <laughs> available. I said, sir, I did a couple of vacation job. I just want you to tell me how to become successful. And he was like shocked. And he, he you know, he sit me down there and tell you, like, I can tell you what my mother tell me, you know, buy land. And then he told me about this tractor. And you know, he, he gave me a good story about equipment and stuff. Mm-hmm. And at that point in time, I said, okay, what business I can do that will last for over 100 or 200 years? So then when I look, I say, you know something? This will be around. Forever. <laughs> then I said, you know, switch to be wrong forever. Mm-hmm. And then I said, well, let me incorporate both of these and I can uh, do recycling. Because the, 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 the process of collecting waste will change. You may change the trucks, you may change the, the receptacles, but you still have to go to house to house to collect. And so at that point in time, he said, you know, I choose recycling and, and, and the garbage. So that's how the journey of wholesale horses started and, and stuff. So my dad had a, a whole set of truck and, and I, I repaired the set of truck and stuff. Um, when I was going to school, I used to work on the truck though. You know, I used to work on the sewage truck. I, I remember, I had, I had some fun, fun days of that. And I remember then, probably about a week or two after I went back in school and in class and you know, the guy, the teacher came and said, I, I was sleeping, I was like nodding. He said, yo, Cherry, get it. You know, you want to stop cleaning sewage for the night? You went, you went, you went, you went, you went paid attention. I felt so bad. And a bit, at that point in time, every, all the students, nobody don't want to sit down with me and eat lunch with me. And yeah. it was, it was, it was a change in my life. So it was a, a loner. But I had, I, you know, I, it was a loner. What makes you wake up in the morning, Addison? I, I, I enjoy exactly what I enjoy my life. I, I, 
to see my goals coming together, um, especially in the recycling business and everything. Despite all of the, the, the controversial uh, topics that surrounded me, I am focused on my vision, I have a goal, and I'm working towards the goal. I, I know you get a lot of pushback, but it, will, it, it all will work out someday. As a self-made <laughs> man, you would have run into many obstacles. Yes. Yeah. Um, those obstacles ever made you feel like giving up? The... Um, it had it made me down, but I know I, I don't have I don't have to give up because if I give up, you know how many more people that need that I've given up on because so many people looked at me and come up and say you know you encourage me I'm gonna be your mentor and sometimes. When it do cross me, I just go to my room and spend a little time in my quiet room and get cry a bit. Cause I'm very, I get very emotional sometimes. So I go into my little room and shut down my little shell things and then I can't come back up and be fat child again, you know, yeah. there and kick, kick some butt, you know. Yeah. Um, and I have a strong faith in God, you know. Uh, from, from 16 years old, we have God bless fat child on the I've shows. seen that, yes, and, on the video. Uh, yeah. I had it for one. And honestly, I can't sit and tell you how many people the company have right now, but we do have, we do have so tell me a little bit about the and, and this this interview is really more about you the yeah. person but okay. still let's understand the business that you're in so you have several dimensions to the business I see you're doing some road building too as right. well so you've got you've got the, the solid waste management you've got the recycling so so how, how is the business structured and how do you uh, how, do, how does it all come together it's like an ecosystem um, mm. the, so, let, so let us start. The, the septic um, helps, all of them help each other, all of them are the same. So we are looking at how ways that we can re recycle that base water that we collect someday um, at the facility someday. We're looking at how that we have the collection of garbage, how we can recycle that, and then look how we can incorporate the, the recyclables in there. Also, the compost and stuff, we're looking to put that back into our farmlands and show how we can get a better yield of crops and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, it's all like an ecosystem. So, thank you very much. My very special guest today, Barbadian entrepreneur extraordinaire. At times, he has been controversial, <laughs> but he's not afraid of facing the controversy and he's doing things that have not been done by others uh, and putting his money where where his mouth is by taking the risk and going out there not afraid of failure and proving that if you really apply yourself you can be hugely successful we we are great fans of, of you anderson and, and, and the work that you have done and at capital media we also are strong on recycling and will continue to support you and you have supported us in the past in our very early stages you you were one of the people who came in and, and supported us and i've never never forgotten that you know, we're grateful for that faith that you placed, uh, placed in us. And of course, you're also a man of God and you keep your faith very strong too as well. Even to the point of putting it on your vehicles. Yes. God bless my <laughs> child, you know. And uh, I, I was always more, I've been stuck behind that truck many times, you know, and I, and I thought, you know, wow. Uh, it's lovely to see that a business house is not afraid to, to, to let its faith be, uh, be, be, be out there. Thank you very much, Anderson Cherry. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson.